Yeah, you ever heard of trains? Oh. Uh, oh I gotta start my local recording. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it, Liam. <laughs> I, I withdraw my yay, Liam. Get off the stage. <laughs> Coming at you with a giant. You suck! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's me, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, non binary pals. Uh, your favorite Yay Liam podcast host. Gonna drink a fifth of bourbon on this show. Hmm. Uh, because I uh, thanks for the money. I don't. I don't have any alcohol in the house except for some gin. You don't you have rum in there somewhere? There is. I'm not going to drink that. I, right I, I am not drinking alcohol this month. My concession here, because I think if you drink alcohol during Ramadan, you get like eat, fucking dunked directly Express into train hell. To hell. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> I, uh, I'm just not drinking because it's 11 a.m. where I live. <laughs> <laughs> ah, cowardice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, well, I guess here we are. Uh, welcome to Well, There's Your Problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. I, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Uh, okay, uh, go. I am Alice Gorval Kelly. I'm the person who's talking now. My pronouns are she and her. Yay, Liam. Yay, Liam. Hi, I'm Liam Anderson. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. And to all the commenters saying how great I am in the last That's uh, right. YouTube video, thanks a bunch. Appreciate you. We have a guest. Uh, and to those of you who still complain, uh, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Excellent. Time to quickly way. undo that. Mm. Hi, guest. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Joseph Kasabian. My pronouns are he and him. Are you going by Joseph now? Uh, if my agent's uh, asking, yes. Oh. <laughs> Big right. Joey K. Jo Big jo Joey K. Jo oh. Joseph Kasavian, host of the podcast Lions Led by Donkeys, author of The Hooligans of Kandahar. To Jesus Returning Christ, Joe, plug your own shit better. <laughs> Thank you for being a better intro than I am. <laughs> it's not that I don't do this for a living or anything. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, now, now, Joe, you... You were a tanker, right? You d you did tank stuff. I did do tank stuff. Yes. Now, now I I just want to pitch this to you. What if your tank were a lot less maneuverable? <laughs> that is a really low bar, because uh, especially as someone who is in an M1, they're not very mobile because they destroy most roads that they're on because they're fucking huge. <laughs> uh, and to make that less mobile seems less than ideal. What if you could only go in two directions? Yes. Sometimes feel, only one, really. Yeah. That what, would, if you that, what if I was steam-powered? I, 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 <laughs> I feel like this, this, this just makes me very easy to murder. Now, what if your tank um, accelerated very slowly and also decelerated very slowly? It would just be a tank, Roz. <laughs> Actually, the Abrams is pretty fucking agile for all of its flaws. <laughs> it gets going really fast. Uh, I mean, it does have a jet engine in it, uh, but... Mm. I feel like at that point, you just have a very heavily armed and heavy armored battering ram. Now, what if your tank ran on coal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say I'm not a fan of this one. Because uh, as, as a lower ranking person, I would 100% be shoveling that shit. And that sounds terrible. <laughs> today, today, we're going to talk about armored trains. Hell yes. Yes. Um, like the, if our two podcasts had a child. Yes. <laughs> Our beautiful podcast son. <laughs> Lions led all, by problems. Yeah, we're yes. all very proud of our beautiful, large son, Lions led by problems. <laughs> seen, seen on the screen in front of us, this is an armored train which uh, Winston Churchill was on, which huh. you can see had a, a, a slight derailment, and it's now being pulled out by a regular train. He was just Winston Churchill... <laughs> It was Winston Churchill on it when it happened, and if so, it's unfortunate that it only was a slight derailment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just, I just was thinking that he has a way of making everything around him fuck up like this, so it's like very on brand. The well, lightest touch, but for mass casualty events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the murder touch. Can anyone do here do a Churchill voice? No. Okay. I'm too sober for that. Damn. I can do Kennedy. <laughs> yeah, what, what if JFK was on this train? Yeah. So uh, Churchill wrote, 
Uh, nothing looks more formidable and impressive than an armored train, and nothing is in fact more vulnerable and helpless. It was only necessary to blow up a bridge of culvert to leave, uh, to leave the monster stranded, far from home and help, at the mercy of the enemy. Yeah, but it's armored. You can yeah, hang out there is. for weeks. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a train. You just go to the buffet car. Congratulations, yeah. you're yeah. now just a pillbox. Yeah, but this is, our, this is really just a mobile pillbox when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get to that. But first, we have to do the goddamn news. God, I love that picture. <laughs> you ever seen the movie Death in Venice? <laughs> <laughs> Gi- Giuliani's house got raided. I have no idea why or what happened because I was busy putting the Probably slides because, together. Probably uh, because of his many crimes. I would guess Allegedly. so, yeah. <laughs> this picture is just the meme of what, what if you bust and she keeps sucking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, uh, they took all his shit, all his electronic devices. Yeah. One cell phone, one iPad, one laptop. Mm. Uh, they left after about 45 minutes. They was this the also FBI? Executed, yes, they also Probably. executed a search warrant at the Washington area home. I'm literally just reading the news. Yeah. <laughs> We're a wire Victoria agency. Coenzing, who is close to Giuliani. Coenzing, who is married to and law partners with former top Washington, D.C. borough prosecutor Joseph DeGenova, Represented Ukrainian oligarch. Uh, I'm not even going to try it. Whatever. Furtash, <laughs> oh, Dmitry Furtash, <laughs> himself as the subject of a federal indictment in the United States. Are you saying that while he was accusing Hunter Biden of Ukraine-related crimes, he, he himself was doing, yes. was doing Ukraine-related crimes? We all do a little bit of Ukraine-related re- crimes. It you just have to happens. set an oligarch to catch an oligarch. Yes. The Sorry, only thing I that can stop a Ukrainian tweet. crime is another Ukrainian crime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a tweet from December 22nd. Giuliani, I want to remind you guys, went to law school and was a lawyer, and in fact, worked for the Southern District of New York, the same people now prosecuting him. Mm-hmm. Quote, they want to seize my emails. No reason. No wrongdoing. Attorney client privilege? Question mark? Yeah, it's not... Like, I, I understand that because of my parents, I didn't go to law school, but no. As no, someone, not, not as here, someone who regrettably did, all I can say is that, like, he, I, I, I don't know what's going on with Giuliani. He's been <laughs> like this for a good decade, at least. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna tell someone, hey, I did a crime, tell your priest. Rudy, hey, Rudy yeah. Giuliani <laughs> is, the, the, like, the, the best example of forgetting all the shit you learned in law school, who isn't me. I think I think what they wanted to do is they probably want to seize Giuliani's emails so that they can uh, pass so they could say they have them and then pass off Hillary Clinton's emails as his. Right. <laughs> that's, that's the deep state at work right there. Yeah. You're going to find an email baby. that's like, yo, should we do Benghazi signed Rudy? <laughs> I mean, uh, what if the possibility here, and I've heard this before, what if he was always a dog shit lawyer and he just has no idea? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 Which is very funny, the idea that, like, uh, the mob prosecutions in New York only required, like, a dumber than average guy who wasn't a very good lawyer to carry them off. You mean Rudy Giuliani? Yeah. Yeah, I do. (laughs) Also, uh, this has nothing to do with anything, but he did also fuck his cousin. Hmm. You what? Lots of people fuck their cousins. Einstein fucked really his cousin. cousin for oh, this is the hill we're nah, dying no. on. <laughs> it's, uh, it's cousin fucking. I feel a lot more pushback at the cousin fucking than I expected. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I thought we were all cool here. I didn't know it was a Habsburg podcast. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. all follow Edward Habsburg on Twitter. We're all God's children in the dark. Great. <laughs> 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 right. Okay. In, in other news. In other nudes. Yes. White Turks man. Turkish oh, man. Turks man. Oh, Turkish, oh shit, it's Turks my mentions. <laughs> <laughs> the Turk Go. lusts in his heart for uh, Vienna and also now calling Joe Biden a dog of a piece of shit in his mentions. <laughs> Would you yes. not? Yeah, oh, you're on the right track. Yeah, it's for the wrong, wrong reasons. <laughs> well, like, Erdogan, Erdogan also said he's gonna like recognize America's genocide of Native Americans. Thanks, as yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was like, as oh, if the shit, two were okay. equal. Like, yeah. you know, it, it's interesting because 
I'm in uh, a master's program right now for the history of genocides, and I happen to be Armenian, and I also am very currently in a class about the Native American genocides. So, like, the idea that he's going to uh, uh, recognize the Native American genocide, one, great. Two, not the same, because recognizing the Armenian genocide is literally illegal in Turkey. Uh, while I am in school learning about the Native American genocide at a school that's, like, down the street from Liam. So, like, <laughs> not <laughs> equal by here. a Jew, in fact. Yeah, it's a Jewish university. Yeah. Uh, we'll get you. We'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> and much like, the great conspir- much like the great conspiracy theories that like as as Aries and Turks have about Armenians, I joined forces with Jews to become more powerful. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and we're happy to have you. <laughs> so it's now the Jewish dash Armenian space laser. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, w- w- <laughs> we only bring more cologne. Uh, so y- <laughs> I, I, That's I, fine. I, <laughs> we, we are not known as a good smelling people. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to admit, I was very skeptical that Joe Biden was going to recognize the Armenian genocide after 106 years, especially because like Obama said he was going to do it and didn't. Uh, but, you know, it's like that onion thing is like the worst fucking guy you know makes a good point like <laughs> yeah <laughs> i guess you can slap an i in at the end of your last name biden but i'm still not inviting you over for dinner joe bidenian <laughs> you know he introduced himself to a, a, a fucking table full of greek diplomats with hi i'm joe bidenopolis once so he will do it he will yes. do that god damn it dude <laughs> he will oh, fully call good. himself joe biden <laughs> It's <laughs> uh, bad enough I have to share a first name with them. God damn you, assimilation. <laughs> Joseph Robinette uh Kasabian fucking, Jr. Kasabian. Yeah. yeah, Joseph Robinette That's Kasabian. you. That's you. Yeah. That's you. Uh, I'm legally changing my sir. first name to Armin. Does that make us the <laughs> Secret Service? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mr. President, get down. Oh no. oh no. I hope I have a sweet nickname. I know all the presidents have really weird nicknames when it comes to like hey, code words. And- <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, fuck I, ass I is entered the White House. <laughs> uh, have, have you guys seen the movie? <laughs> fuck ass is down. <laughs> guy, guy just like mustering into his sleeve. Oh, fuck ass is in the executive present. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's honestly the best nickname I've ever had. <laughs> I, I did have ass for the longest time as a nickname when I was in the military because like I have ass right in the middle of my last name and soldiers are perpetually children so they're like oh, it's ass god damn it <laughs> I don't even want to hear it Rosniak Hello. <laughs> Yo, um, imagine having a funny name I can't <laughs> relate especially if the people out there learn my full name Mm, your true name, mm, your true your name. word of power. Personally, I'm just I'm pissed that my initials just are like Ack, like fucking Kathy. I kind of <laughs> like that. Yeah. Uh, my initials spell L J S L A. Oh. And now I I invite your comments to figure Fancy out what my full boy. name is. Yeah, double barreled last name and two middle names because my parents <laughs> knew they were gonna have one kid and really wanted to make it count. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think that Turks was Mad X24. Turks Mad. Turks Mad. Uh, Turks Mad. Yes. So t- today we're going to talk about armored trains, but first we have to ask what is armored trains? It's, what is it's, train? It's, it's when you take trains, but you armor them. Yes. Okay, that, cool, that was next easy. Slide. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna talk about, See you next week. We're going to talk about a couple kinds. Uh, one is like the armored train, which is sort of like a tank on rails, right? Uh, the other one is railroad guns. That's big guns on rails, right? And then the third one we're going to talk about is everything that doesn't fit into those categories, right? Nice. So you got like railroad guns down here. These were used by the French in WW1. Here we see a bunch of Estonians have uh, commandeered Toby the tram and are pointing <laughs> guns out of it. Um, yeah, it's cool. I love I love yeah. a murder caboose. Yes, <laughs> I'm kind so, of sad that like you know America sucks in infrastructure. But if there's like one thing we would do is give these to cops, and we haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of how, these how rolls blessing, up folks. outside your house, and it's like uh, police fucking, and it's got like the autism breast cancer yeah, awareness yeah, thing on it. 
<laughs> a fucking you armored paint. train just rolls up with a 150 millimeter anti tank gun and blows your dog up. <laughs> And also shooting you pamphlets about uh i don't know stand up to cancer I, I, i'm just i'm just i'm just hanging out in my compound with my many wives watching the acf build a railroad line towards me like <laughs> oh that's not good this is gonna be really of, bad when they think finish of the that. waco siege as extended vacation bible school <laughs> why are they putting a flamethrower at the front of it they set up a bunch of camps for navvies outside my house. I'm going to be really screwed when the ATF shows up in a month and a half. <laughs> I attach a full group to my pistol, and the ATF train busts in through my wall and crushes my stand dog. Stand down! Stand down! <laughs> Some guy is out there, like of the armored bulldozers the Israelis use to knock over Palestinian towns. But doing that to put up signals. <laughs> no, no, I, Liam. They also occasionally run people over with those. Mm, I want to yeah, think. Sure do. I want to think about the opposite end of this. Now that I've mentioned the ATF, which is okay. We 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 can all agree on the ATF having armored trains, but. Is an armored train licensable by the uh, by the ATF? Is that like any other destructive device? Do you have to get a tax stamp for your armored train? You wind up. Yeah, it's just a... one. It's just a one note. You got to put it in the uh, the boiler. Yeah, I'm a class yeah, one railroad, and also I have a concealed <laughs> carry license. I wouldn't really call it concealed. <laughs> I mean, technically, like that the killdozer guy, right? Uh, yeah. mm. That was like he made his own weird tank, Gunport, but also all he? of the guns were totally legal. So there if you, you build go, an yeah. armored train and just use like hunting rifles out of it, it's technically like a tree stand. <laughs> are you th point. are you then not violating potentially state law about shoot about hunting from a moving vehicle? Uh, I'm assuming we put this train in Texas and we're good. Right. Yeah, we're we're hog hunting I mean, from trains. <laughs> I, I, that, in that case, you need to switch out for an AR-15, because it might be the 30 to 50 fucking feral hog guy. I think yeah. you, might, you might be governed under the, uh, uh, the AAR at that point, as opposed to uh, <laughs> any kind of federal rules or, or state rules. You're just um, like being sort of. You see outside the navy camps, which they're constructing towards you. You see a bunch of guys in different blue windbreakers yelling at each other because they're not <laughs> sure whether you're the ATF's problem, the Department of Transportation's problem. Yeah, <laughs> Department of uh, fuck ass. <laughs> Alice, you put you put this slide in. Please tell me what's going on. It's Dracines. This is a free bonus slide. A Dracine is a little, it's a darling little tank on rails. It's adorable. We literally just did the thing we threatened Joe with <laughs> in the first slide. We we put a tiny little tank on rails. It, it's technically, some of these are self-propelled. Some of them are just, you have to have a big fucking steam locomotive behind it, <laughs> pushing it. Um, Come yeah. on, little buddy. Come um, on, little buddy. Most this looks like a punishment. These, yeah, most of what these are used for, it turns out, is escorting armored trains. So if you're running an armored train down line, you run one of these in front of it and one of these behind it. And that way, if somebody tries to blow up the railroad line or whatever- They're blocker cars! Yes! Yeah. Literally yes, those guys hanging out at the top can just jump out and chase after them. This this looks like a, if you were a tank crewman, which granted this is like World War One, so being in a tank crew already sounds miserable. Like and you've pissed off someone like, oh, you're going in the fucking mini tank train. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Welcome to you're the tiny train world. Weeks. I'm just I'm just going around the tracks like this guy right here, just going exterminate, exterminate. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the one on the top left? It's just like a cup. Yeah, it's yeah. a bathtub. It's just guys yeah, being just, dudes, Joe. Just it's like a teacup ride on rails. <laughs> it's got a machine gun, but none of those guys are in uniform. They're just like hanging out. That's just like me and the boys after COVID. We're, go we're all going to put <laughs> on <laughs> our bowl of hats and like go ride an armed bathtub around. <laughs> For security's sake, we should jam as many people as possible in here. <laughs> it's can't not fall armored. down if you can't fall over. <laughs> it's not armored. You will simply hide behind your friend. <laughs> it, it looks goofy until you do a drive-by. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I thought we'd start with a basic breakdown. The pros and cons of armored train. Okay, hmm. let's start with the pros. Looks, looks cool. super dope. Looks uh, cool. Lo looks, that cool. looks cool as hell. Definitely looks cool. Um, heavy armor. That's good. Mm -hmm. Protects you from getting blown up. 
Many uh, guns. Gun, big, many, many of gun. <laughs> you can just carry as much ammunition as you want. Yeah. You can just like haul it back and forth. Yeah, you can just throw yeah. it in the back. You don't yeah. have to worry about losing. Well, I guess you do have to worry about having your tracks blown off, but not the same way as a tank. Yes. <laughs> not in the same way, yeah. Worst case scenario, um, it breaks and it's a pillbox. You, you, I'm not you, sure you, that's the you, worst you, case scenario. I will get to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, no it, shortage it, of crewmen, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of people being used to run these things. Uh, it's, it's like a big, it's like a land battleship, you know? Mm. And about as useful. Um, cons. I'm taking that to mean extremely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it accelerates slowly. It stops even more slowly. Um, so if you see something wrong with the track ahead, not good. This uh, is largely before like <laughs> stabilized guns, right? So if you yeah. can't like shoot on the move with this thing. I mean, you can. It's just you, like you can, but it just you just kind of hit stuff. Not yeah. accurately, yeah. It's it, you don't miss. You simply suppress. <laughs> um, you can't. You can't really switch the tracks without stopping, right? So if you you know the the, the switch is aligned wrong, you got to stop the armored train. Someone's got to get out, throw the switch, get back on. You keep going, right? Uh, most of them required coal. Even worse than the coal is most of them, you know, since it's a steam engine, it needs lots and lots of water. <laughs> um, which sometimes is easy enough to procure, sometimes is very, very difficult, especially since they're very heavy. The steam locomotive is using up more water than usual. So a lot of times that really limits the range. Mm. Uh, you also need a crap load of men to operate these things, right? So... You know, it, it, it doesn't operate. These things don't work very well, except in very controlled conditions, which, you know, not really a war thing. Mm. <laughs> no. war, war known for its very, uh, very ease of control. Yeah. Orderly, yes. <laughs> now, nevertheless, uh, they, they, they gave it a shot for a long time. I, I, I like this one. This is a Russian one we're going to talk about later. You can see here are the two guns, and then you can see here's... Uh, 17 and a half kilovolt overhead uh, electric wire, which I guess they're shooting through. Absolutely no problems here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. It, I um, mean, they slap all these guns and armor on it, and I assume they didn't do anything differently to the engine or the braking capacity in any way. So it's like, no, no, we're going to make it heavier in every way possible. Dimitri, and, when you uh, say we, sh we shoot through electricity line, we make outside of train electric. No <laughs> one can touch. <laughs> Their slowdown method is the Grand Theft Auto. They simply put the turrets in the direction of where they need to and, and just fire repeatedly until it slows them God, down. that takes me I'm, back. I'm thinking they aim the turret too high up and they accidentally swing into the wire. Oh, 100%. I did that in the tank and I didn't need it for power. Like, you just can't fucking see out of the optics for shit. <laughs> so I guess we sort of start seeing armored trains at first in the Civil War, right? The American Civil War. The War of Northern Aggression. The, the Shut war, up! The <laughs> War of Northern Aggression. Scoreboard! Uh, scoreboard! <laughs> scoreboard! Uh, All right. Uh, oh, my fucking soul hurts. <laughs> okay, so, you know, railroads are the main supply lines for the Union Army, right? The Confederate Army also had railroads, but they were all of different gauges in the South, and they're all inoperable with each other, so the supply lines in the South are really fucked up, right? Good. Yeah. Owned. Taylor's but, the type yeah, there. Yeah. The supply lines in the South are really fucked up. Yes. Um, well, the thing is, all the supplies were in the North. Mm. Mm. You know, that, that's another issue. Well, you can, you, can, you can go and send, like, irregular forces of cavalry up north to go and get them, but then the downside is all of those guys get demobilized and become terrorists. Yes. And then they get shot. I don't know if that's a downside for the south, <laughs> but... Mm. So, nevertheless, the Union and Confederate armies tried to go beyond logistics and actually use the railroad for active fighting, right? Just pulling up on a siding. Way yeah. down there. <laughs> so I think this guy here is the first railroad gun ever built. Uh, so you got this 32-pounder Brook Naval Rifle, which is, you know, a cannon, right? On this big wooden frame on wheels, right? Looking good as hell. 
Yeah, well, it's it's the Confederates though, so you got. Oh, I retract oh, this. Looking yeah, bad no, as hell. Right. No, he looks bad as hell. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this actually I, sucks. Looks bad. I don't, I don't know anything about this except it looks like kind of uh, like the hole, just the <laughs> hole the kid apparently fires through. There, I, it looks like like old wooden playground equipment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the guy apparently looks like he's sit, looks like he's sitting in like a camp chair next to it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, Tim, we can't play no more. Daddy's got to fire at some Yanks. You got to be comfy. Yeah, Daddy's got gonna a go do a slave table? rebellion. Yeah, I've got, I've got like an occasional table for my mint julep here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was the Confederate one. The Union also came up with their own railroad gun. This was called the Dictator, right? Jesus Christ, boys! <laughs> <laughs> Man, how come the other one looks way cool? Let's just slap a fucking mortar on tracks. No, we yeah. don't need any armor. We're good. We're good. Yeah, flat car, just... best car. <laughs> this is a, a we'll draft the replacements. We don't give a shit. It's a thirteen-inch siege mortar on a flat car, a really short flat car. The first time they fired it, it broke the flat car. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's the kind of ingenuity I come to expect. So they put it on a stronger flat car, or I don't know if it's a stronger flat car. I think it just might be a shorter flat car. And then it worked fine. <laughs> it looks like a, it's on a mine car. I love it. Honestly, yeah. Um, Did any of these, like, change the course of the war in any, like, appreciable way? Ah, uh, not really. I mean, no. this one, sort of. This is the most successful one was the uh the union's railroad battery right um mm -hmm. you can see it's sort of like it's a pillbox on wheels right um so uh, the most crucial link in the union supply lines uh to the north was the philadelphia wilmington and baltimore railroad which today is the northeast corridor right um in 1861 it was this sort of disjointed system involving a ferry crossing on the susquehanna river you had to take trains through the streets of Baltimore, uh, one car at a time with teams of horses, which was kind of risky because there's a lot of conf Confederate sympathizers in Baltimore. Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. It didn't was Lincoln, a slave state throughout the war. Didn't yeah. Lincoln almost get assassinated in Baltimore? Yes, Before they finally got yeah. him in, in D.C.? Yeah, they had to take him through at night under, under like, uh, you know, just secretly because, you know, there was so much, so much risk that someone would just, you know, pop him off, right? Mm. Um the old Don't city wasn't full off. of oh okay <laughs> i mean he he was not a bad looking man you know? sir we will track <laughs> you down and suck you off <laughs> yeah just the secret service 19th Take century it. or today threat profile for somebody trying to pin the president down and suck him off <laughs> Taken would have been a lot weirder of a We movie. have uh, tactically ascertained he <laughs> intends to do fellatio to POTUS. <laughs> and boy, howdy, this one's a doozy. It'll suck the soul off, yeah, am I right? That's some guy's just getting drilled with a 44. <laughs> the Philadelphia, Wilmington, and Baltimore was, of course, a common point of, like, you know, casual sabotage, right? And, you know, casual sabotage. <laughs> Yeah, yeah and, and, recreational and, sabotage. Yeah, recreational <laughs> sabotage, and Confederate sympathizers would also try and you know pick off railroad workers fixing the tracks at a distance That's with rude. rifles. That is very rude. Yeah. So the solution was uh, Baldwin Locomotive Works came to the rescue with a modified baggage car with armor plating, right? Uh, and they put a twenty-four pound howitzer in there. Uh, and fifty ports for riflemen at the uh, around the car, right? Imagine. The fucking hearing damage you get <laughs> from firing a 24 pound cannon in a baggage car that's had a bunch of sheet metal, like, well, on the bright side, you yeah. only suffer it once, baby. Yeah, yeah. exactly, right? <laughs> just concussive TBIs um, every time you fire. And one thing you might note about the railroad battery is it itself is very, very armored and it has this very flamboyant Civil War era locomotive pushing it. Mm. Um, conspicuously, With a spot yeah, conspicuously unarmored. Um, <laughs> oh. So, uh, you know, this thing is essentially for intimidation more than anything else, right? Uh, mm. But it, it worked pretty good. They, they they were able to keep keep the railroad under a better state of repair once they had this thing around to sort of protect railroad workers, right? 
Yeah, um, you don't want to snipe at the guy's uh, fucking straightening rails or whatever if this thing can come running down yeah, the thing. Yeah, because you might yeah. just get, you know, 24 pounds worth of shot in you, which probably yes. wouldn't feel so good. I gotta imagine the conductor in the in, in the train pushing is like, wait, I have to do what? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I get in the armor? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Generally that speaking, <laughs> that, that is a solid, solid, uh, gothic pointed arch cab right there. <laughs> I'm sure it made it. <laughs> yeah, the last use of gothic arches in battle until Warhammer 40k. <laughs> also, like, if if you're a train engineer at this point, everything in your training and your life experience has been, if there's a massive explosion in front of you, that's a good time to jump off the train. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you just have to keep going. Because no, it might not be the boiler, it's just it's the giant cannon that they're firing off in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> so, they, the, the Confederates did manage to capture this in 1864 and they destroyed it. Because they're the bastards. Haters. Yeah, they're haters. Um, this was one of two problems on this Union supply lines. Uh, north of the Mason Dixon line. Um, the other one, of course, being the Camden and Amboy Railroad, who colluded with the state of New Jersey to charge excessive transit duties on Union shipments heading south in order to keep New Jersey taxes low. Now, Jersey really hasn't <laughs> changed, has it? I, I know, right? <laughs> A hilariously corrupt boy, yes. I just wanted to sh uh, shove in uh, my favorite quote on uh, the state of New Jersey from Charles Sumner. Uh, New Jersey is the valley of humiliation through which all travelers north and south from the city of New York to the city of Washington must pass. And the monopoly, like Apollyon, claims them all as subjects, saying, for all that country is mine and I am the prince and god of it. You know, we love it when senators <laughs> would make a classical allusion. Um, to, to and then that guy got Jersey. beaten beaten with a cane, right? Yes. Not yeah, for this, though. Floor of the Senate. <laughs> I'm starting to think that may have been less to do with his uh, his abolitionism and more to do with the fact that he kept referencing <laughs> stuff like Apollyon. Yeah, I'm not beating him because of a stance on slavery. I'm beating him because I don't like him. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just annoying. <laughs> so after the Civil War, um, armored trains are used a couple times in the Boer War, uh, which we mentioned in the first slide. That was when Churchill got uh, got his shit rocked. Um, mm -hmm. One of the, the first times. time. One of the yeah, times. One of the first yeah. times. Unfortunately, uh, it's like the one time you're kind of cheering for the Boers. Like, why couldn't you have you killed Churchill? <laughs> <laughs> um, when a, 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 a use in uh, the early 1900s, this is in 1912, was the Bull Moose Express, right? Oh, I'm sure um, that's good. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it's very progressive, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Oh, crap. Um, so this is during the Paint Creek and Cabin Creek strike of 1912. You know, this is a West Virginia minor strike before Blair Mountain, but part of the Coal Wars. Um, you know, the miners at mines near the Paint Creek demanded compensation equal to other mines in the area to be allowed to shop at places other than the company store and a couple other things. Communism. Those ungrateful yeah. hillbillies. I was about to say. Hillbilly <laughs> communists. <laughs> the, man the management refused. The miners went on strike. Uh, management then started evicting miners and their families from rented houses, and they started bringing in scabs using a train called the Bull Moose Express. This is ah. right, yeah. This is right when Roosevelt started um, the Progressive Party. So you know, <laughs> and this it's was literally uh, just like slapping uh, <laughs> a, like a Black Lives Matter sticker on the side <laughs> of the paveway bomb, right? Yeah. <laughs> So this, uh, this was a train made out of an armor-plated locomotive, a passenger car, and a box car with two door gunners. <laughs> <laughs> Seems a bit unnecessary. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm a strike breaker. Yeah, I'm a strike breaker. What do you do? Well, I'm a door gunner. I'm a door gunner. You have a helicopter? No, <laughs> it's a train. If, if you could still get away with this, there'd just be a line of rail around like the Tesla factory, and one of these would just be circling it 24-7. Can we sell, can we design and sell steam train door gunner patches? Oh, I sure. fucking hope so. These, were, these, these door gunners were from the Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency, sponsored by you know, the mine owners and members of the local progressive party. Wouldn't even um, spring for the Pinkertons. 
budget cuts. They spent all the money on the door gunner. Yeah, nah. Well, I, Baldwin Feltz kind of specialized in mine strikes. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. <laughs> all the miners were holed up in these camps with their families. You know, beatings and shootings were common in these tent cities, uh, mostly uh, on the part of management, right? And after uh, another series of escalations, you know, Mother Jones showed up recruited a whole bunch more miners into the strike. She's, she she started a liberal news magazine. I I mean eventually <laughs> it it became liberal. <laughs> oh um, man. So and then a 3000 man march descended on Charleston, West Virginia, where the men read a formal declaration of war to cool. Governor Glasscock. <laughs> yes. uh, rad. Go, go, Governor what? Governor Glasscock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is West Virginia. You get some weird names. Um, so over the next several months, starting in September, there were a few declarations of martial law, then rev- revocations of that declaration. Uh, the governor forcibly disarmed both the miners and management while the strike continued to grow and the tent city got bigger and bigger. Um, now, as, as much as you know, the disarming sort of lowered tensions a bit, strikers were forbidden to congregate. They were subject to military trials. Um, and after a long winter hold up in tents, the miners wound up in a scuffle with the Baldwin Fels detectives at a town called Mucklow. Uh, and that left at least one casualty. Well, West Virginia sure knows how to name them. Yeah. So in retaliation the next day with the sheriff's blessing, the bull moose special rolled slowly through the tent city, uh, with just the, the machine guns blazing the whole way. <laughs> Cool. Oh, it's a war yeah. crimes machine. Yeah, it's yeah. a war crime machine. Um, <laughs> the only infrastructure we can build. <laughs> so, incredibly, only one man was killed, a miner named Sesco Estep. That, mm, that <laughs> sounds like somebody made up a name to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he was, he was a, a miner living in a house next to the encampment. Um, he was on strike, but uh, you know, I, don't know, I don't think he was a leader or any, anything. And, you know, after this, they reimpose martial law, they arrest Mother Jones, a whole bunch of other stupid stuff happens, which doesn't, not a lot of productive stuff happens from this particular strike, unfortunately. Um, But the miners did learn a tactic, which was to rip up the tracks after the train passed. Nice. (laughs) Well, so much for that investment. Yeah, exactly. It works. It works once. It works one time. (laughs) One time. (laughs) So it began a long tradition of stopping armored trains. <laughs> yeah, which is apparently very easy to do. Yes. Um, so now we move on to WW1. This shit looks like it's got a fallout. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, 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 this is the war that didn't have the Nazis in it, right? Thank you, Ross. Yes. <laughs> just to yeah, clarify. The war to end I, all wars. I mean, yes. to be fair, a lot of the Nazis were still in it. They just weren't Nazis yet. They just yet. weren't Nazis yet. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Is that, does that say USN? Is that a Navy? That is a, that is a Navy railroad gun, yes. Man, the Navy was just fucking around in the First World War. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna buy a bunch of uh, fucking blimps and also a railroad gun, I guess. Yes. Is it because oh, it's like accurate. a repurposed uh, uh, like naval cannon? Uh, yes. Yeah, oh, the, Nazis, shit. the Nazis did that in the dying days of World War II. Yep. At least I was experimental, was putting naval cannons uh, on tanks. Mm. It didn't go great. No, it didn't. I, I could imagine that. <laughs> Turns out so, you can't do that. <laughs> this is the U.S. Navy Mark I uh, railway mount, they call it. Um, again, built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works. Um, yeah, we did and this it. this was actually a relatively simple theory of operation here, um, which is, you know, basically you take the gun out, um, you aim it, you fire it a couple times, and if someone, like, you know, seize your position, you just withdraw the gun into a railroad tunnel. <laughs> okay. And if yeah. there's no tunnels around conveniently for you? Oh, well, you don't use it there. Oh, okay. <laughs> you use, some, use something else. It seems quite doctrine. limited. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it worked pretty well in uh, France. Um, you know, but one of the things about World War I is that there's not too many armored trains in use in this war. Uh, which you would think because it was the earlier war, it would have more of them, but the doctrine wasn't really developed yet. No, they um, hadn't gotten there. Yeah. 
you know, Austria Hungary tried to fight Italians with them. That's about it. Um, successfully or uh, not really <laughs> famously the two most uh, competent sides of that war <laughs> <laughs> yeah general luigi cadorna brains genius time for a 15th battle of the isonzo <laughs> they have, really they... turn in a corner highly recommend the lions led by donkeys episode on same Oh yeah, yeah. We actually just released the first the two on uh, Conrad von Hotzendorf too. This guy's a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> you can see one of these guns. It's at the U.S. Navy Museum in Washington D.C. Um, actually, back when I was in high school uh, and I was on the rowing team, I would go past this on the Anacostia River every day. <laughs> it's a threat. You stay yeah. on the fucking river. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Water gun meet land gun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then this is uh Austro Hungarian armored train here that I don't know anything about. Oh boy. Yeah. You can tell I it's mean, a great piece of technology when it has that many fucking angles. Yes. It's like uh, the um a lot think of, of the, it as the dazzle tanks. camouflage for the <laughs> railroad. <laughs> it, it's a lot like the the tank that the, the German Empire tried to build, and I think they end up making like three of them total and they're like this oh, fucking yeah. sucks let's just steal the british one <laughs> <laughs> speaking of stealing mm. uh we're gonna so there was one political faction in europe in the early 1900s who really 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 liked armored trains who like could a- that have been that was <laughs> <laughs> the bolsheviks so can i th- please get more of the east is red Oh fuck! I don't have. The, oh fuck! Where's the? E, where do I have the East is Red? Uh, <laughs> well, that comes later. Uh, 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 East is Red. Do I have it under T or do I have it under E? East is Red. Okay. Thank so, you. The Red Army operated no fewer than hundred and ten armored trains what? throughout the Russian <laughs> Revolution <laughs> and the Civil War. Some of them were even standardized. But the vast majority were sort of improvised by workers and naval engineers, right? Me, me and the boys have formed ourselves into a commune. We've killed all of our officers, <laughs> and then we've just started welding sheet metal onto stuff, and then we're just going to drive it down the tracks at the capitalists. Now, I have a serious question here, which what? is, given that this is an improvised mobile weapon of war with a mount with mounted crew served weapons on it uh, that's like designed expediently by people who are not necessarily part of an organized military force are these technicals i think it's got too much armor to be a technical it's not a hilux yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a train just rolls past you with like A1 plumbing on one of the box cars and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm just happy it's that supposed these, to be there. I'm just so happy these communes existed because finally one that I'd fit in with. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, another thing is in Moscow during the early part of the revolution, the, uh, the Bolsheviks had a, 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 a fleet of armored trams. Hell uh, yes. <laughs> both as... Uh, <laughs> Both as personnel carriers, but they had a couple that were small artillery platforms. Hell yes. Give me an armored tram. Oh uh, yeah, he rings the little bell twice in order to uh, signal <laughs> it's time to fire. <laughs> ding ding! <laughs> ding ding! <laughs> building, building facade just gets torn clean off, yeah. In, in 50 years when we finish our tram system here in Hawaii, I hope one of them is armored. <laughs> That's just for the, in t- case. That's, yeah. That's the uh, the tourist repellent. <laughs> so, so the um the the Bolsheviks sort of come up with uh, uh, a doctrine for how how to use these things, right? They have the heavy armored train and the light armored train, right? So right. The, the heavy armored train sort of stayed behind the lines, offering artillery support for the light armored train, and that would go ahead and engage the enemy directly. You know, you just sort of steam off. And start shooting at people, then theoretically you would come back. Because it's uh, very funny that these guys are sort of prefiguring a lot of World War II like early armor tactics without <laughs> tanks. Yeah, no, we have. They're just like, oh, we've got a cavalry tank and we've got like an artillery tank, but um, also they're both trains. Yes, <laughs> well, I'm sure a lot of these guys are World War One veterans as well. So like, mm, they they, def- they, would, they probably would have seen something. Uh, similar i i don't know like it seems like they'd work really well because you know 
purposefully design anti-tank weapons aren't really a thing other than like shitty anti-tank rifles. Tom Gewehr, yeah. Yeah, so like, yeah, unless someone just trains a field piece directly on the train, it's going to fuck some shit up. So a, a, a common theme starts to emerge here, which is abuse of railroad equipment. Um, <laughs> no, so, not to build our armored trades. No, no. Uh, <laughs> no, even, even, even just to use them, right? So a good example is uh, on, on September 12th, 1918, in a city called uh, Simbirsk. Um, so the, uh, in order to clear the way for armored train number one, which was also named the Minsk Communist in honor of Comrade Lenin. Um, <laughs> so, was that its full name? Yes. <laughs> Listen, uh, they had, the communists not given to brevity, and I respect that shit, so I much. Give them that. Yeah, like this is the kind of thing that leads you to an order of battle with like the 352nd Guards separate uh, infantry special purpose detachment battalion regiment. That's also somehow independent. Yes. <laughs> so they wanted to send this armored train across a mile long bridge across the uh, River Volga, right? But they wanted to check for mines beforehand. So what they did is they found another. Uh, they found just a regular steam locomotive. They built. They 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 you know they built up the fire. Uh, they built up a head of steam. Uh, some guy got on the train, opened the throttle, and then got off. It's a drone. It's a yeah, URV. It's, a <laughs> it's an it's an unmanned railroad vehicle. <laughs> Tactically ghost riding the whip. Yes. <laughs> and then uh and then they just sort of let it go and it disappeared into the distance and they're like, all right, it's good to send the armored train over the bridge. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the, like, what about the steam first locomotive? Train? Yeah, that that's yeah. somebody else's problem. That's someone else's <laughs> problem, yeah. <laughs> And they went across the bridge and they started shooting people. And so uh, the, the Komach uh, People's Army, I don't know who that is. I don't, Probably I don't know. like one of the Greens, just like Probably, a bunch of yeah. rowdy boys making some kind of a point. Yeah. They were forced to abandon the city to the Red Army. Um, <laughs> and meanwhile, I don't know, 75 miles away, that, that locomotive was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just kept going. I hear it's still going today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're riding the rails, you may see. So, a major problem with armored trains becomes apparent, apparent during a revolution is that the enemy could just go behind you and wreck the tracks so you couldn't retreat. And at that point, you know, the armored train would be captured uh, and, and then the opposing side would have the uh, armored train, right? Um. Mm. The result of which was these things change side constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Just painting and repainting duck season, rabbit season, sar season, <laughs> communism season. Yeah, actually, they had all the dead bodies and replacing them. The bulk, the bulk of the armor is actually just paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's load bearing in. paint. You know, it rolls in and it rolls in after like uh, eight or nine changes, and it's like, wow, this is a real landlord special. Now <laughs> 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 we use it against the, uh, the we'll use it against the Chinese to really offend Mao. Um, <laughs> 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 so w one such train was this called the Zamorets, right? Ooh, yeah. In fact, I think that's worthy of a. <laughs> This was built in 1916 by the, the Tsarists, right, in Odessa, right? Mm. And they use it as an anti-air platform against Austria-Hungary um, for what little air power there was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was captured by the Red Army in 1918. They sent it to Ukraine to fuck up some nationalists, but uh, it was derailed by artillery fire. They had to sort of like tow it back. They fixed it up, and then Trotsky sent them down, sent it down to put down something called the Czech Legion in Chelyabinsk, which is like a really they 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 have sort of a complicated role in this whole yeah. thing. Yeah, the the Czech Legion is one of the <laughs> weirdest stories of the revolution, and honestly, one of my favorites. There are so many fucking <laughs> weird stories about the Russian Revolution. I I genuinely, oh, yeah. oh my god, they. They were the just chaos rune. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were just trying to get to Vladivostok. 
right? <laughs> and just trying to get home after <laughs> doing my sort of allied intervention and it's gone horribly wrong. Yeah. And 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 they 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 were mad that you know it was taking so long. Um and you know, eventually they got feisty and started capturing railroad equipment <laughs> to to get over the Vladivostok, whether the whether the Bolsheviks liked it or not. Right? I am going home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With that's all Roz. the energy of a drunk Liam yeah. at five in the morning. No, 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 that's Roz, baby. That's Roz, two fifteen a.m. I'll sleep wherever he will not. Yeah, that no. is Roz declaring that he is going to sleep in his own bed right after he vomits off the side of a bridge. The Anabasis <laughs> of yes. the Czech Legion, <laughs> yeah. where they're just they're like they're driving this fucking train across country and kicking like fleeing czarists off of it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think they fought everybody and every side of the war at some point, all just trying <laughs> to get home. <laughs> Yes, they took this along with several other trains. They're they're moving in multiple trains, right? And they're sort of, you know, they 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 took possession of this this train, um, and then they start hauling ass down the uh, uh, Trans Siberian Railroad. <laughs> um, they're following the retreating White Army and pursued by the Red Army. Oh, <laughs> what a great place to be! But you're wondering how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> like saying that to a guy with a microphone in your face as you're dodging like rifle fire. <laughs> um, they, they, they start picking up more armored train cars as they go. The train keeps getting longer and longer. <laughs> armored train Katamari. <laughs> yeah. um, they also steal a train car full of czarist gold at some point. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Czech version of Indiana Jones. <laughs> No ticket. <laughs> so, um, at some point, they get they get as far as Manchuria, um, and they get captured by some <laughs> Japanese uh, backed troops of some kind. What the uh, fuck? Hike, my man! Yeah. You went the wrong way. Check yes. the is the other way. <laughs> yeah. Well, the idea was they were going to Vladivostok so they can go around and come back because they don't want to uh, go back through the Red Army. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> They wait, did the check's man- like, wait, are these guys fucking Japanese? Where are we? <laughs> Steve, you told me. You told me you knew where we were going. Are we even and in I, fucking Russia anymore? I knew I shouldn't have trusted you. <laughs> no, I must have taken a wrong turn back at uh, mile post, uh, I don't know, 4,905. 9, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they get off of the Tokyo Underground, like, what in the fuck? <laughs> they managed you to- guys know how to get to plat of a stock through some clever diplomacy they managed to get the train back um, <laughs> and you see i crushed my fingers when we made the deal <laughs> and they they set back off for vlad of a stock uh and they traded it to the white army for safe passage the hell out of there um then the white army you know they're run out of Vladivostok by the uh, by the Reds, and they flee into China with the train, where it winds up in possession of the the Fangshan army, which I, I don't know exactly what that. I, this is another war happening in China. Lo- local yeah. warlords just local gets a train. War, warlord and the uh, and it winds up changing possession another three or four times in China, and then finally winds up captured by the Japanese, and it disappeared. Sometimes. <laughs> Just some Japanese officer in Manchuria, like, what the fuck do, do you want me to do with a seven mile long armored train full of like Czech guys' old stuff? I found a very confused guy named Pator in the back. I don't know. <laughs> this guy's still I drunk. I haven't seen him sober, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you just put me in one of those zeros. Uh, I'll go get those bastard Americans. Uh, I remember. Like, dude, like vomiting on himself as he's, he's, just just, he's trying to fight everybody. Yeah, the Czech guy who just rolls with it, just swears allegiance <laughs> to the Emperor of Japan. Whoever uh-huh. gives him food and beer at that present moment. <laughs> I'll be loyal to whoever you want. I just want to stay in the train. Yeah. There's 15 cars of Pilsner Urquil and 23 cars of empty <laughs> bottles of Pilsner Urquil. <laughs> <laughs> Hard bass and cigarette butts everywhere. <laughs> the Japanese guy just wading through two inches of stale pills. Yeah, I don't even want this fucking train. <laughs> the 
<laughs> we're taking the security deposit. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, there was another problem that was start, sort of learned during this period, which is that um, it turns out steam locomotives are not very, uh, not, are, are pretty conspicuous, right? Um, um, you know, so especially owing to the, you know, invention of airplanes, it was really easy to spot them from the air. So, you know, during it, people started experimenting with stealth locomotives. Ooh, dazzle camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is a Chinese stealth locomotive. You can see the smokestack is diverted and it goes down under the train. Um, uh-huh. And this right know, here. It still this, looks like a train to me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can't. The smoke goes under the train, though. And then you can see this is a trash can where someone lives and shoots a machine gun out of him. <laughs> Oscar the Grouch is actually the yeah. uh, most decorated uh, member of the Chinese army at this point. Yeah, we've just attached an HVAC system to this <laughs> fucking steam train here. Uh, the okay, Polish... but wouldn't the smoke just immediately rise back up as it's being as a Joe, train is pushing up. through it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, the Polish also experimented with this. Here's a Polish stealth locomotive. You can oh, see uh, the stack goes up and down and exits out the front, right? Crazy straw. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's, there's some problems here. Number My one is just create detail. a smoke screen that you can't fucking see where you're driving? You don't need to. It's a straight line. It, it already <laughs> has no windows. <laughs> My favorite detail about all of these things is whenever we see something particularly fucked, there's always a bunch of guys in great coats standing around looking at it like, yo, have you seen this shit? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so there's a couple problems with trying to do this to a steam locomotive, right? Number one is the firebox, you know, where the fire is, requires some draft to keep the fire go to going, right? Usually the smokestack helps with the draft and that keeps the fire going. Once you impede it, there's less fire, and then the thing doesn't have as much power, right? Just tossing lit cigarettes in there, trying to get it to burn more. <laughs> it's stealth because it's moving so slowly. Another problem is there's very hot cinders, which are being blown up like right into here at high velocity, and they just smash into the top of the pipe. So that falls apart pretty quickly. Um... And then another problem, of course, is that smoke rises. So, you know, once it gets down to the ground, then it floats back up, you know, and it sort of chokes everyone out who's on the locomotive and gets in their faces. Right? <laughs> well, that's no good. So this, this didn't work very well. Um, there's uh, one experiment that was done in Britain for a stealth locomotive down here. You see he's got three smokestacks. The idea being that then the smoke disperses more quickly. Uh, it doesn't work. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So stealth steam locomotive doesn't doesn't work. Just imagining like an F one one seven, but like <laughs> on a bunch of train wheels. <laughs> the B two stealth bomber sleep <laughs> to the tracks. <laughs> um. So after World War One and after you know the 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 so the Russian Civil War, uh, the only people who were fielding armored trains were Poland and the USSR, who had just, you know, finished doing the Polish-Soviet War, right? Um, People Poland, are going to be very mad at us about this still. So. Yes. Yep, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we're Nazis. We're literally Nazis. Can't imagine As why. As you all know. <laughs> so, Poland had fielded more than 50 armored trains during the Polish-Soviet War, and the Soviets had them, fielded man. their own armored trains. Um, you know, the reasoning being that, you know, the change of gauge would, I guess, prevent the enemy from capturing the train, um, which was not the case. The train still just got captured. But you can just take the, and- take the railroad that it's on. Yes. Was, was there a train on train combat? Because that'd be fucking rad. Oh, uh, we're going yeah, to get like to that. It's like Monitor in a and Merrimack. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Except without the, uh, the maneuvering in circles and firing. It's like, oh, we missed. Okay, I guess we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> Listen, we got one shot at this per week. If you miss them again, you have to ride the little tank. <laughs> We're putting you in the fucking teacup. <laughs> um, so then World War II happens, right? Uh, you know, Germany invades Poland, and Hitler reasoned, of course, that the only way to stop a good guy with an armored train 
is a bad guy with an armored train. <laughs> <laughs> so most of the Nazi armored trains were just ways to deliver men and tanks to the front lines, but a lot of them had like anti-aircraft guns. They had howitzers and stuff like that. Some of the trains had like it's like an anti-partisan thing, right? You want it, it, it's same as the same as the Confederacy. You want to stop a guy just taking a shot at your train with yeah. a rifle. A, a train you know, version of a presence patrol in an MRAP. Yes. Mm. Uh, some of the trains had some armored command posts, um, but probably the only face-off between two armored trains happened near the Ukrainian city of uh, Kovel. Kovel, I don't know. Uh, in World War II, when a Soviet train, the Ilya Morometz, which we saw earlier, that was the one with like lots and lots of guns, the big long one, mm. uh, finally managed to, uh, you know, they used they used the, their guns and a rocket launcher on board to cool. derail and cripple the Nazi train Adolf Hitler yes! in May 1944. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, suck it, Nazis! They they uh, derailed pit- and killed Adolf Hitler. Yes, who was who was a train? Uh, who was a train? Uh, yeah. Very <laughs> sad they never made that into an Indiana Jones film. I just I'm picturing a train with like Hitler's face on the front of it, which like <laughs> yeah, the, t- Thomas Thomas the, tank the tank engine universe took a dark turn. <laughs> it, it, what if YouTube content creators made a Thomas the Tank Engine? <laughs> um. Now, the, the, of course, the most famous Nazi railroad thing was the Schwerer Gustav, right? Come the, again? The Schwerer Gustav. <laughs> uh, and this is a railroad gun in the loosest sense. Yeah, heavy Gustav. Yes. So uh, Thick Gustav. Yes. <laughs> El Grande. Super Gustav. <laughs> This is the largest gun ever fired in combat. It's like, I forget how big it is. Big. Very big. big. It needed four uh, tracks. Yes. So, you know, this is an ordinary sort of, an ordinary railroad gun, right? You know, you can haul it around easily, plop it somewhere, you fire off a few rounds. You know, sometimes if it's really big, you might need some stabilizers on it, but otherwise, you know, it's not a big deal. You can move it around, get a few rounds off. Move it in a tunnel if someone starts looking at you funny. Um, <laughs> but uh, the Schwerer Gustav required two parallel railroad tracks, right? Which were installed specifically for the gun. Um, it had to and be trans- the purpose. Yeah, it had to be transported in parts and assembled in the field. The gun Just couldn't- looking at the little fucking IKEA manual for this is like <laughs> oh, I need a fucking Allen key. <laughs> It could, the gun couldn't rotate. The tracks were curved, and that's how you angled the gun. Jesus. <laughs> um, now, the purpose of this gun was to destroy the Maginot Line, right? A line you could just go around if you wanted to. Yeah, they hadn't finished the gun when the Nazis realized they could just go around. I want a railroad gun. We have a railroad <laughs> gun at home. <laughs> So it was just sitting around for the early part of the war until the Nazis figured out they could use it to siege the city of Sevastopol, right? Which they did. Mm. Um, So in order to put this thing together, they needed four railroad tracks. Two of them were for the gun. Two of them were for the cranes that put the gun together. (laughs) Um, It took five weeks to put it together with 4,000 men this all, it, 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 <laughs> all of them looking like the little Ikea guy, yeah. just frowning. It arrived on a 25-car train. Uh, only one car was required for the manual. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they needed a 500-man crew to fire it. What the fuck? <laughs> You've created a less efficient battleship. Congratulations. <laughs> this could fire a shell 37 kilometers, right? So... In 1942, they finally deployed it, and over the course of June 5th to June 17th, it fired 48 rounds at Sevastopol, and then the barrel wore out. Yeah, but on the other hand, I bet all of those 48 rounds fucking counted. You hear one of those coming <laughs> over, and you're like, Ooh. Oh dear. I'm Just sure firing they're... a train car size shell at some. <laughs> so, you know, the, ba- the barrel was worn out from firing 250 rounds in testing. 
Um, <laughs> what the f- <laughs> yeah. So they disassembled the gun. They moved it to outside of Leningrad, where they were planning to use it again. They put it back together with another brand new four track railroad, and then that attack was canceled. <laughs> this is a jobs program. Yes. <laughs> 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 Um, now, when the Nazis retreated from the Soviet Union, they took the gun with them since they realized the USSR was the only other country crazy enough to try and use it. Um, <laughs> They're probably right. <laughs> just they just a, as a giant fuck you, they would use it to shell Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Hey, guys, look what we found in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> um, they also built a second identical gun called the Dora. And that was briefly deployed outside of Stalingir- Stalingrad. 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 <laughs> but they, they never fired it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that's that's one end. That's the big. That's the big guns. Hmm. For when your industrial capacity like outstrips your reason. Yes. But only like kind of because the. the- the metallurgy sucked so bad that the barrel wore out. <laughs> yeah, we can make this thing and you can fire it once. Once. I don't recommend it, but we could build it. Well, 48 times. <laughs> now, let's look at the other end. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the little guy. It oh. looks like something that you would like uh, go and put your kids on. Yes. He's just a little guy. Just a little guy. This is the... Romney, Hyde, and Dimchurch Railway in Kent. Uh, is right? Britain real? Uh, no. Yes. No. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is what's called a minimum gauge railway. Some uh, rich race car drivers came up with it in like the teens or 20s or something. It's adorable. Um, it's adorable, yeah. It's a little, little, it's like a big model train set, right? I just uh, wish they'd it? use the drag race trains. <laughs> <laughs> They got a 13 mile main line. It's still around, actually. Uh, it's sort of a transportation system, but also sort of, you know, it's a big model train, right? And sure. it runs, you know, it's just inland along the coast, right? Uh, and coincidentally, it also ran near a secret military installation at a uh, town called uh, Dengue. I Dengue? think it's probably just Denge. Denge, Denge. whatever it's called. And so, thus, the War Department took it over in World War II. <laughs> so, of course, here here's the miniature here, here's the yes. miniature armor train. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is the most operator looking <laughs> shit I've ever seen. <laughs> this high speed low drag motherfucker in the Brody helmet, <laughs> fucking Bren gun. I love this so much. It's and if perfect. he stood all the way up, like his yes. entire upper body would be yeah. sitting out of this train. <laughs> So uh, it, 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 this armored train patrolled the line and dutifully defended it. Um, Dad, what did you do in the war? <laughs> well, <laughs> I was going to say this is this is this is the this is the most Dad's army thing I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> Her Royal Majesty's train corps. <laughs> yes. Um. So well, now, I started with the distinction on the model train. The model train line <laughs> was actually used for practical purposes in the war, though. It hauled they materials. gave me a medal, but it's like at scale, so it's like a <laughs> tiny little one scale medal. They they used this line to haul materials to um where they were constructing what was called the Pluto, uh, the pipeline under the ocean. The idea was they would use it to supply fuel to the Allies after D-Day. Man, we should do a D-Day episode, because there's so much weird engineering happening. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then here's, here's another one. Here, here's of course, the, of course the tiny little railroad was never attacked because the Nazis were too overawed by it. You I look at that and you're say, like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to fucking die. I don't want to. They didn't get attacked because they couldn't find them because that sweet camouflage job. I yeah. Think, yeah. <laughs> With all of its distinct shapes and colors that you're not supposed to do for camouflage. <laughs> so this is um this is uh the Herban armored train used by the Slovakian resistance against the SS. 
Maybe uh, I've like, catastrophically yeah. understood the concept of a resistance, but like, <laughs> if you're just wheeling an armored train out, <laughs> hey assholes! <laughs> I think you might not be. <laughs> you might not be a resistance anymore. You might be like I, I don't even know what to call that partisans. Uh, yeah. I, don't know, I, I, I feel like a partisan is like a guerrilla group that hides in the woods and sabotage trains that rule yeah. their own train out. I think you're just an army at that point. <laughs> We've all become Czech. <laughs> all right. So this is obvious. It's very aesthetically pleasing, um, I mm. think, for an armored train. Uh, it had a typical armored train career. Um, it made it to combat at first in October of 1944. It fired off a few rounds. It broke down. It was towed <laughs> into a tunnel and abandoned. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the crew of 71 went out and sort of fought, you know, as partisans against the SS and managed to repeal uh, repel the 18th SS division. And the whole time just mad that they don't get to use their cool well done, train. Boys. I know, well right? Done, boys. <laughs> that would be the biggest fucking letdown. I spent all this time building and painting this motherfucker. <laughs> Look at this helmet I'm wearing. <laughs> God damn it. Just a bunch of guys wearing like American style uh, train engineer caps. <laughs> with little, camouflage. Little checks, yeah. Yeah. Being told stories of their grandfathers being trapped in a train fighting the Japanese, the whites, and the reds all at the same time. <laughs> so, you know, after World War II, of course, they realized this stuff is, you know, these armored trains, they're ludicrous, right? And uh, we, we can't use these, right? And it went away forever, right? Obviously. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, welcome to Cuba. The good kind of Cuba, or the uh, the capitalist kind of Cuba? The capitalist kind of Cuba. Oh boy. Uh, this is the train blindado, right? Which is Spanish for armored train. Well, it does what it says on the tin. Yes. The, the, the Spanish for train is train. Is yes. endlessly <laughs> amusing to me. So, in 1958, Cuba had more miles of railroad per square mile than any country in the world. Uh, it was all closely integrated with the American railroad network via a series of railroad ferries that went to Key West. And, well, not Key West at that point. I think the, the overseas railroad had washed out by then. Uh, I don't know, it's probably somewhere in Florida. Uh, you could get a one ticket ride from New York City to Havana. Um, huh. You know, there's lots of trains, there's lots of freight trains that they sort of just brought the freight train over to Cuba. Uh, you know, there's lots of stuff like that, right? On the boat. Um, but in 1958, Cuba was also having a revolution, right? Because Batista sucked. Uh, yeah. Bad guy. <laughs> so, one of the final battles of the revolution was the Battle of Santa Clara, right? In, in, 1950, in December 1958. Uh, and this guy, from, the guy from the t-shirt, right? Che Guevara. <laughs> oh yeah, I've heard of him from t-shirts. Yeah, the t-shirt guy. He, he arrived in Santa Clara with about 300 soldiers on the 28th of December. And Batista's forces arrived in the train blindado uh, from Havana. They had 373 men. They had arms. They had ammunition. They had provisions to hold out for two months. Uh, and they stopped the train at the foot of a hill called uh, Loma de Capiro, uh, and which just happened to be where Che Guevara kept his guerrilla forces, right? And they so they're going to besiege him in the yes, armored train. In the armored train, I guess. And, you know, they set That's up a cool. command post down there, right? So the biggest problem with the train blindado was that it wasn't actually armored. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a train semi-blindado. The, these, are, these are, as best as I can tell, ordinary 40-foot boxcars. Um, I think they were built in Detroit in probably the 1920s. Um, <laughs> Based on the boxcar ends, the, their Hutchins ends. Um, <laughs> um, now, the second problem with the train blindado was that it was a train, right? Um, so about three days after the train shows up, Shea sent 18 guerrillas to go attack the train. Uh, the officers on board the train decided, oh, we better move the train to somewhere that's not right next to where Shea is, right? Um, mm -hmm. So they, they start moving call. the train away. But Shea anticipated this and he got some of the guys from the local agricultural school to grab a bulldozer and rip up the track on either side of the train. Oh, do it. That's how you get yourself on a t-shirt is that <laughs> yes. kind of thinking. So the train derailed. Um, 
And the guerrillas just started hitting it with Molotov cocktails until all the soldiers were like, it's too fucking hot in here. And they got out and they surrendered. How um, many Molotov cocktails <laughs> would you have to have thrown at you before you surrender? I 40. think my answer is lower than one. Yeah, yes. I was about to uh, say. I can that. put up with a lot of bullshit. Yeah, but <laughs> the issue was they had been putting up a lot of with a lot of bullshit from Batista. Yeah, so, yeah. but I'm I'm getting paid by the government, man. I'm paid to put up with bullshit. That's fine. So, so 40. They, my answer is forty Molotovs. So I'm gonna they, preemptively uh, you know, surrender. Yeah, they, basically, they, they came out, they surrendered, and they're like, yeah, fighting for Batista sucks, guys. Um, you know, they were all like, oh, we're sick of fighting fellow Cubans. <laughs> and this was like the, the, the final turning point in the revolution. Um, you, know, uh, you know, Batista fled Cuba about 12 hours after this train was captured. It's like, uh, oh, shit, my fucking train. Oh, no, my ride. <laughs> oh, no, my train. <laughs> Um, and of course now it's a national monument, um, in Cuba. You can go here if you don't live in the USA. We um, can go. We just got to jump through a bunch of hurdles. It's oh, got yeah. a cool, like, uh, sort of concrete sculpture in there. It reminds me of those like Yugoslav war memorials where they just put a bunch of concrete in a fucked up shape. Oh yeah. They got like, uh, they got the bulldozer memorialized too. Oh hell yes. yeah. Hell they put yeah. A big concrete plinth. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, that was, um, that was Cuba. Meanwhile, up north, we have the white train. Oh, I know about this. Oh, yeah. So there's, there's some problems with nuclear weapons. Yeah, right? they can destroy all life on Earth. That's Which is one fine, of them. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Ambivalent about that whole thing. Na- Nasek uh, Liam has logged on. <laughs> Um, one of the problems with nuclear weapons, though, is you have to move them around sometimes. Um, like, for instance, right after you build them, right? So the Department of Defense created this called the White Train for this purpose, right? You have these heavily, heavily armored cars to transport nuclear weapons, you know, from the, 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 the Pamtex plant in Amarillo to wherever they need to go. Um, you know, you got this uh, this old U.S. Army troop carrier here up front, you know, where the people who are guarding the trains sort of live, right? Then you have these white cars. These are all full of nuclear weapons. The Department um, of Energy guys, the National Nuclear Security Administration who guard these, are, as you would expect, psychos. I, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't Just, blame them for that. They kind of have to be. <laughs> no, <right>? yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, they've replaced these with trucks for reasons that we'll get into. Yeah. Um, and those trucks are, like, unmarked. But my favorite thing about them is the, the National Nuclear Security Administration has a little, like, advice for law enforcement page on this. And it's like, if you encounter one of these vehicles, like, in under attack or in distress, right, do not approach it without uh, like authorization from the Department of Energy in Washington, who will provide you with a sign countersign. If you don't <laughs> have this, or you use the sign incorrectly, the advice is to take cover. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they've, like, the DOE has, has created... I guess, I mean, they're kind of cops, right? Um, kind of. Yeah. Like, they're kind uh, of uh, cops, kind of troops. Like a, a branch of cops so psychotic, they have to like keep other cops at bay. <laughs> and it's funny, she, like, I only know this agency exists, because like when you get out of the US Army, you go to all these job fairs and shit, you kind of have no choice. And these guys recruit so fucking hardcore, uh, because like, well, you're already used to never being home. Would you like to do that in a truck? <laughs> would, would you like to like be in miserable conditions but on the other hand have the opportunity to drive around with a mark 19 just all the time <laughs> it's like well kind of and I, I don't even think they get paid very well either which is like mm, fine no, you're just living I. fucking constant uh it, in the, like the southwest driving in circles a salute to the brave men and women of the NNSA. <laughs> so, you know, they, they, uh, you know uh, usually at each end of the train, they would have this, the armored caboose. <laughs> um, you know, and this has like ports for shooting rifles out at the top and everything, right? Um, so, you know, they started using this in 1951, 
And the issue with using it was it was very conspicuous, right? Um, you know, they, you, you didn't know when it was going to run, but if someone spotted it, they knew where it was going. People would come out and protest, right? <laughs> yeah. And there was a relatively organized anti-nuclear movement in the U.S. at this time. So people could just do that. People yeah, just have I mean, someone watching the railroads. Yeah, you could just show up and, you know, you could, you could block the tracks somewhere and, you know, the train would have to stop and then you could, you know, I, I guess yell at the engineer who can't do anything because he's, you know, being held hostage by uh, new cops. DOE psychos. Yeah. <laughs> like handcuff yourself to the locomotive or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the nuclear shipments were late all the time. The railroads complained because they couldn't move their trains because it was being blocked by protesters. Well, I mean, uh, that is the point of the protesting, right? You yes, make it so inconvenient. Yes. That's, a, that's a success story for the left, even if it's like in being done on a kind of like weird level. Uh, the, the, the DOE's first off idea was like, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the cars different colors. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. We're going to paint what? We're going to paint this one the trans flag. Yes. <laughs> the, the, they, they painted some of them brown, they painted some of them green. Uh, they painted some of them blue, and they're like, well, no one will ever be able to tell what kind of train this is because it's different colors. Despite no, the fact just, that. Just ignore the two uh, cars full of like bus car guys. Car. Yeah. yeah. And I've never seen a train car that looks like this before anywhere. Um, these, these are very noticeable um, if you know what you're looking for. Um, and, and then finally, when, you know, that didn't, that wasn't enough stealth, they discontinued the train in 1987. And now they, you know, they ship the, uh, they ship the nukes in trucks. I think they do still have some like box cars that they can use to ship the nukes, but that's like, they, they're sort of in regular freight trains now. <laughs> mm. I don't know how they cool, guard though. those. The, uh, the, the safeguard transporter, it's got a, it's got a tilt sensor in it. So if the trailer goes like out of alignment too much, it just floods the whole thing with fast expanding foam, which I wow. really appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that was, but we tried some other things after this, uh, cause it was the cold war and everyone was insane. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about ballistic missile trains. Hell yeah. Yes. Okay. So one of the advantages of like a ICBM submarine, right? You don't know where it is, except there is, there are some places where you do know where a submarine is not going to be, which is land. <laughs> <laughs> right? So the enemy has a full 29% of Earth where they don't have to look, and we want to eliminate this strategic advantage. Um, give me a Typhoon class with railroad wheels. Give me, give me a land nuclear ICBM submarine, right? Uh, or as, as seen in the documentary Goldeneye. Yes. Also known as a train, right? Mm. Uh, this is a very, I think, Soviet idea, which is why it's natural that the Americans came up with it uh, in 1950. <laughs> Just imagining, imagining the Soviet response to a bunch of protesters have tried to block the path of our train. I think it just keep the train <laughs> going. Notch eight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, the Americans thought of this first uh, in the 1950s. They did some weight tests for a uh, Minuteman missile launcher car on the Union Pacific. Nothing came of it until um, the 1980s, though, right? Um, when they, they, they deployed or attempted to deploy the Peacekeeper Rail Garrison, right? So um, that's this right here. Observe 007, an ordinary boxcar. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket fall up, Mr. Bond. <laughs> but if you press this button, the Peacekeeper missile rises from within and is off to Moscow within mere minutes. <laughs> um, Fantastic. Yes. So this is a number of uh, absurd second strike capability systems that were sort of developed in the late 1980s. Um, the original idea here was that the nuclear missile would travel around in this boxcar in ordinary freight trains. Just sort of. <laughs> hey, what are you hauling? Yeah, a bunch of aggregate and nothing. also a nuclear missile. Nothing, nothing. What's up? You can check every car except that one. Yes. Well, you can't check it. There's no door. So, and 
you know, th- these would these would travel around disguised as boxcars and ordinary freight trains and could be, you know, sort of at any point, you know, they could get the train to stop and they could launch the missile if they needed to, right? Um, and I guess at some point, someone at Strategic Air Command who had, you know, shipped something by rail in the past realized that's a terrible idea. Um, well, I mean, just having a bunch of loose, unaccounted for ICBMs that you put in fucking self-driving mode, like a Tesla. Yeah, and and then you've had like you've had like um, you know, uh, I I mean, if you've ever shipped anything by rail, the, the stuff gets handled pretty roughly. <laughs> Which I don't know is if that's good for a nuclear weapon. I think about the the <laughs> thing that used to be stenciled on old British nuclear weapons, which was handle like eggs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the idea then was they were going to have dedicated missile trains carrying the nuclear missile boxcar around and a few cars for personnel and uh, equipment, and they'd be roaming the United States rail network all the time, just sort of at random, <laughs> right? <laughs> Hey, what do you feel like going today? Eh, St. Louis. Yes. And then, and then there was, uh, you know, they constructed one prototype car, um, which is, of course, completely indistinguishable from an ordinary box car, except it has twice as many wheels, and it has no door, and it's much larger than an ordinary box car, and it's in its own special train. Indistinguishable. Um, indistinguishable. Very stealthy. Indistinguishable. <laughs> um... Yeah, so this this project was cancelled because the Cold War ended, uh, and they put the prototype on display at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force, um, where it sits to this day. Hmm. Man, you really just have like an armed forces museum, just as like all of the dumb shit we did <laughs> yeah. that doesn't really like come off. Imperial War Museum, greatest museum. Yes. Oh, it's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but the Soviets also built their own nuclear missile train. Uh, but they actually deployed theirs. The RT-23 Molodets. Um, <laughs> Please tell me it just rode around with a missile out of the top like that. Oh, that'd be amazing. I don't... that uh, You know, uh, we didn't consider when we built the missile system what would happen if the train reached the tunnel. <laughs> no, it's like riding with the top down, you know? You just, like, you let the missile get some air. Exactly like the cannons in the fucking electrical line from earlier. Oh, we'll it's get to that. gonna snag everything. Oh, no. Okay. So this is a big, you know, big stupid, stupid missile and a big stupid train designed to vaguely resemble a Russian refrigerator car, right? It's still pretty conspicuous. Emphasis though. on vague. Yeah. That's fine. It doesn't. It doesn't need to be inconspicuous because, like, you can just be like everyone who looks at this is witnessing a state secret. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you know the uh, the unique feature um, of this car is that most of the Soviet Union's railroads were electrified, right? Which is what this thing is for here. Oh boy. The idea was before you launch the missile. This thing would rise out of the car, and you can see here it tilts sideways. Um, it shorts the catenary wire uh, so that the, the current go- runs through the car and out to the other end, thereby giving the missile enough room to you know rise up and launch. Um, I think theoretically without damaging the catenary, but I have no idea. Yeah, because that's going to be important I, to have a working railroad after you've just started a nuclear war. That's my. That's what I'm thinking, especially if this is second strike capability. I don't know that you're going to have functioning um, overhead electric systems. You see, Ivan, <laughs> when you fire uh, ICBM through a wire, it becomes electric nuclear bomb, which is much worse. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, so they, they could fit the missile in the car, this nose cone up here on the missile is inflatable. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I just got a pump on <laughs> my ICBM. I knew Nike stole that idea from someone. <laughs> ICBM Air Max. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's also a Merv, because why not, you know, you need yeah, ten bombs, when you- not one. W- when you want to kill people, you want to kill absolutely fucking everybody, I guess. Man, how did we avoid a nuclear war? How did we get barely, on this timeline? Barely. Did, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Because all the other timelines were not alive in it. 
Also, oh, go yeah. listen to the Lions Led by Donkeys episode on Broken Arrows. Yes. Mm. Um, Thank you again for being better at plugging my podcast than <laughs> I am. You, bud. <laughs> Yeah, so the, 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 the typical consist was three locomotives, 17 rail cars, including a camouflage tank car, uh, the, the launching system, um, which is three cars. They had a command post car, communication system car. They had a diesel generator car. Then they had the, the pantry car, uh, a dining car. Yeah, I'm car. going to the buffet car on yeah. my fucking <laughs> nuclear train. Yes. And then they had two separate. Uh, sleeping cars. One for officers and one for enlisted personnel. Gotta maintain those privileges of rank. Yes. Um, all these rail cars were camouflaged as either refrigerator cars or passenger cars. Um, and 36 of these missiles were deployed until 2005. <laughs> <laughs> 2005. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many trains there were, but uh, you know, the, the tr- missile trains were running around until 2005. That's um, incredible. Today, Amazing. there's one on display at the Russian Railway Museum in St. Petersburg. It's like, hey, remember when we could have killed everybody? And we still can, but remember when we could have? Supposedly, there's a new version of this in development right now. Ooh. Yeah. Crazy Russians. <laughs> Listen, you gotta, you gotta modernize that nuclear stockpile. You never know right. what might happen. Um, if you if you don't modernize the nuclear stockpile, the nuclear Armageddon won't be in the cards anymore. <laughs> if you're not having a panic attack about nuclear exchange, you're not paying attention. Yes, but back to armored trains, regular ones. Uh, let's let's get into uh, uh, some cursed Balkan uh, situations here. Oh, so it's uh, like someone just pulled a tank into it. Yeah. Uh, yes. So in the Croatian War of Independence in 1992, this uh, the the Serbians deployed the Krajina Express. Oh my God! <laughs> God, God is a Serb. God is also a train. Yeah, we are the most psychotic <laughs> people in a in a civil war full of like. Oh God! What is it about civil wars? But the Russian civil wars like this, the Yugoslav wars were like this. It's just a time for weird dudes to come yeah. to the fore. Yes. Uh, can't wait for the American Civil War, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna buy a gigantic leather coat and have a bunch of people hacked to death with sabers. <laughs> I'm gonna stay over here. Uh, uh, that <laughs> makes sense, yeah. Where I am. <laughs> yeah, back in the Kingdom of Hawaii again. That's right. <laughs> so, a bunch of Serbian railway workers decided to help, you know, put down the Croatians, right, by building an armored train, right? Um, and this sort of starts out as a bunch of flat cars with sandbags with some metal paneling over it. Um, eventually they get some real armor on it. I was um, going to say, I want to know what that turret is off of. But the, the, it's, it's not a turret, it is an entire M18 Hellcat tank destroyer. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> it just has plating around it. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> Well, I guess that saves, like, moving the turret and the turret ring. Yeah, Where the I, fuck did they get a whole Hellcat at? <laughs> <laughs> See, That's yeah, a right one. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we got these laying around from World War II, enjoy. Some fucking Yale guy just kicks this out of the back of a C-130, he's just like, yep, have fun, we, have, we got this in a museum. So this was, it was, you know, this, this was used for, you know, typical armored train tactics, you know, get in, get some rounds off, get out. Uh, repeat is modified, you know, several times. So you know, it eventually became three cars with heavy machine guns, missile launchers, and anti-aircraft cannons. They had some mortars, and of course, the aforementioned Hellcat. Um, there were also three additional unarmored cars on the front of the train to detonate mines in case they were there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, yeah, outstanding. We've taken away the little tra- the little tank that you have to ride in. Now, if you piss somebody off, you have to ride up front in the mine detonation car. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, an example of one engagement it was in. The train provided support during the struggle for uh, Skabernja. 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 Thankfully, uh, so thankfully, Serbian stuff is notoriously easy to pronounce correctly. Yes. 
where the unit was involved in an attempt to destroy an ammunition dump in Zadar by pushing a wagon loaded with 3,650 kilograms of explosives and five tons of shrapnel Christ. through <laughs> through the back of back to the Z- Zadar railway line. The detonator would be a landmine attached to the wagon's bumper. The plan was <laughs> to let the wagon roll down from the village in the din towards the target in the outskirts of Zadar. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> they just they just went to the top of the That's hill. That's some weird Pink Panther shit. Yeah, I they, went to, they went to the top of the hill. They uncoupled the car um, and let it roll down towards the target. And then it finishes with the results of this mission, if any, remain unknown. There's there's a video on YouTube you can see of a bunch of Croatian dudes in the same war, incidentally, on top of a mountain with a sea mine, like a naval mine, <laughs> that they that they just fucking kick down the mountain towards the Serbs. <laughs> like one of them just gets on the radio like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's coming down now, and it's just, <laughs> the thing just fucking rolls down the mountain and blows up, and it's just like, war is fucking stupid. <laughs> I'm this this seems very similar to the the Red Army thing where they let the locomotive go and it just disappeared. Here they let the car full of explosives go and it just disappeared. Let the train take the strain. I think yeah, I, the missing trains all moved together to join a, a runaway train colony somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome, brother Ivan. <laughs> There's just there's just this ghost uh, train of hev- heavily armed ghost train ro- roaming the. Uh, Balkan Railroad Network. <laughs> and some say, serves. on the 28th day, when the moon is at its highest, a ghost train will roll down the tracks and not detonate properly. Oh! Hard base just starts bumping out of nowhere. <laughs> oh no, it's the wear train! Yeah, I, hold on, I have to launch my fucking train, and you just launch it and you just hear <laughs> Some say if you, if you stay very quiet on Serbsmas, you'll hear the music. <laughs> so that was uh, one of the last uses of a properly armored armored train in combat. Um, since then, I think this is the most recent armored train in existence, uh, VWXX eight hundred. Vux eight hundred. Yes, it, it's looking new, armored as hell. Oh yeah, it's a new armored caboose. The Navy ordered. It's even got a porch, like a proper caboose. Nice. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, this is for shipments of spent nuclear fuel from aircraft carriers and submarines. You know, so that stuff still is going by train. I guess people aren't motivated to protest anymore. But um, spent, right? Like, yeah, what are you going to do about it? Um, Turn it into uh, depleted uranium. I, 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 I like the do not hump on yes. it. Yes. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hump the radiation. Oh, God. Not a good idea. The, girl, the, the <laughs> direction's unclear. Stuck my dick into raw uranium. <laughs> the girls call me the Hulk because I'm really angry and my dick is glowing green. Should I see a doctor about this? Yes. <laughs> and on uh, that day, his prostate grew through three sizes too big. Hmm. This is this is similar to the um to the uh the the white train. There'd be a big nuclear fuel flask uh ahead of this, and then I guess the 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 psychotic DOE police live in here. Um, and of course, this I'm not o- sure if they're even cops. I'm not sure if they can arrest you. I think they just have to kill you. Uh, yeah, they just well, shoot you. Yeah, <laughs> fucking uh, train commissars. <laughs> and of course, this thing is intended to only move in like very secretive, unpredictable shipments along secret routes. Um, cool. Here they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you, I guess you can't move the shipyards and you can't move the, the spent fuel processing facility. Yeah, and you can't move right. the railroads either. What I like is that you know they've clearly selected these lines to try and avoid major metro areas. Uh, couldn't quite get around Cleveland though. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it's gonna make it any worse. Yeah. It all goes to the the crumbling, leaking fucking nuclear facility in Washington. What's up, guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, since then, it's fuck over Buffalo, pretty good there too. Yeah, back, mm. yeah Buffalo uh, seems to just get around Albany though. Kansas City. Mm-hmm. 
Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, since then, not so many armored trains in combat. Um, I guess the Ukrainians have them again now. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of shocked being see like one somehow surface in the Syrian civil war since they were rolling out like cannons from the 1800s. Yeah, I oh, don't know. Does Syria have much in the way of railroads? Is my question. I don't know. Probably oh, not. There's no. The, the the Damascus railroad was actually, I think, uh, I think, I think when the big partition happened, they actually used that as a border. Huh. Um, I think it's the only well. border in the world which is defined along a railroad right of way. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy's ZU twenty three too. Just like he's just chilling in case he he's needs chilling, to shoot yeah. down some passenger airliners. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking if you're you're just going along in the train, you're in the outdoors. I mean, it's cold is the only thing though. So it's it's got, that's why he's got miserable. the balaclava. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's I what assumed it's for. that was uniform in the region. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this a technical? Yes. Yeah, I'm, it's I'm, still uh, not a pickup truck. I'm gonna say no. I, I I feel like a big Soviet diesel locomotive with a flat car is spiritually. Yeah, <laughs> they're <laughs> older coal than we are. <laughs> That's fair. I'll give you that much. Uh Alpha Adin plumbing. Yes. <laughs> it's like some maintenance away contractor. <laughs> <laughs> They they show up in like the Loram rail grinding train. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what have we learned from talking about armored trains? Um, they're neat. Yeah, they're, they're cool. also not they're a good great. idea. <laughs> yeah, they're they're, 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 they're they're a good idea if you want to be cool. They're a bad idea if you want to win your war. But what if you, if you want to be cool while winning your war, you should just have a couple of them. Mm, yeah, that's make it. sure you win at out. least one battle with the armored train. Take them off the track and just like make conga line tanks. <laughs> it would be absolutely ridiculous and pointless, but it'd be rad as fuck. Yeah, all of my tanks are coupled together. <laughs> yes, I have a, I have a, I have a, a tank train. That'd be cool, like a road train, but for tanks. Yes, be awesome. That'd be terrible, uh, and I would not want to be anywhere near it because it would kill so many people on accident. <laughs> Just all of the jet exhaust just melting the tank behind them. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a story once, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take us off of the rails of this for l the last time before we do so safety third. Uh, uh, I heard a story from uh, a guy who was like in in the U.S. Army in, in in Germany back in the back in the eighties, and there was a guy. They had a tank column, and which they were driving on a public road, and a guy in a Mercedes tried to tailgate them. He tried to tailgate an Abrams, and it melted the front of his car. I've heard that I've heard that exact same story, uh, and I've seen cars pull up. Like I never deployed in a tank; I was always uh, dismounted uh, because my life is unfortunate. Um, and the, I've you know, when you pull like tanks out of motor pools and stuff, you drive them on normal roads, like right by parking lots. And I never saw any paint bubble, but I've heard that story so many times. Maybe it's just like received wisdom that it happened. Maybe, like, yeah. The fact, the fact that it's a Mercedes too is like just a bit more of a like fuck you to like fancy Germans. I, I don't know. Yeah, I figure you ought to like paint something on the back of the tank that says like "Keep back fifty feet." Keep, uh, keep normally, back fifty feet, or your or your your car or your will car be will burned. melt in like yeah. seventy languages for anywhere we might be fighting. <laughs> you have like a front ground guide and a rear ground guide, and that's like so mostly so the driver who can't see anything doesn't run into stuff. Ah. Um, but also, you know, keeps cars away. But yeah, mm. I've, I've I've been hearing that story since probably 2006. I went to basic training. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a, a a a section on this pod called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Sent right. in by one Ash Ketchum. Ah, uh, yes. So, hello, Justin, Alice, Liam, and the Activate Windows logo. Didn't say hi to Joe, cancelled. No, I was about uh, to say, yeah. This is Armenian erasure. It's probably, yeah. it's probably <laughs> sent in by a Turk. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Justin, Alice, Liam, and the Activate Windows logo. Ataturk did nothing wrong, and if he did... <laughs> jo Joe deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll do it again. My safety third comes courtesy of my brother, who is COS, or Controller of Site Safety, for Network Rail in the UK, 
looking mm-hmm. after the OLE overhead electric lines for the East Coast main line. Yeah, he's got to move them out of the way if you want to fire an ICBM. <laughs> I, could share, <laughs> I could share the horror story of an overhead line hanging by a single thread of wire next to a computer platform or reinfer- mm-hmm. reinforce Gareth Dennis's point about how to avoid a toilet being flushed on you as it passes at 100 miles an hour. But this safety third involves a recurring character from your podcast, Animal Viscera. Returning champion, Animal Viscera. <laughs> yes. The p- 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 people's champ. <laughs> Thank you. My brother's team are repeatedly called out to the lines north of Newcastle, which goes through a tunnel with low clearance. Because of this, the gap between the wire and the tunnel roof is very small. Every time a pigeon lands on these wires and wanders into the tunnel, there's a bang, some feathers fly, and a pigeon corpse with a terminally shocked expression either welds itself to the wire or falls on the track. (laughs) Pigeons always look shocked anyway, though. Yes. Sometimes this can damage the wire or equipment and needs to be sorted. After then, after they're done, my brother's crew have to dispose of the pigeon fricassee. Yeah, I got my pigeon shovel. Yes. <laughs> they, do, they do this by then throwing them onto the neighboring tracks of the metro. Uh, oh. It's a metro system owned by a different company and therefore not their problem. Privatization is great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a couple months back, there was a new guy on my brother's crew. He had come from, a, uh, he had come from the metro company. Upon hearing of the plan for disposing of exploded and fried p- p- pigeon corpses, he exclaimed that the metro train operators and maintenance people had been wondering for years why their section of track had so many dead pigeons on it and incurred much expense and downtime <laughs> trying to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> the lesson here is littering is cool. Yes. Uh, yeah, the moral here, I don't know. Something about cleaning up your own mess or similar. No, it's littering is cool and works. Littering is cool and, and, and gives people lots of overtime. <laughs> <laughs> Be a job creator. Throw shit out your window. Yes. Yeah. On to railway lines. Anyways, keep up the great work on the podcast. Stay safe and Ramadan Mubarak to Alice. Oh, thank you. What a good safety third. That's a good safety third, yeah. It's short but sweet. Exploded yes. pigeons. It's everything you want from this. Exactly. Um, seen here is Pikachu about to recreate this incident. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, that was safety third. Did you want the drop? Or? I, 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 I guess. I don't uh, know why not. I, I think we've established the danger. I'm not sure if you want the drop afterwards too. I, I think I we've established do. at this point that we do do that. I thought we had established at this point that we didn't do that. I, I thought we did it. Uh, I, yeah, you're out. Fine, I'll just give you this. All right. All right. All right. Um, our next episode will be on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. That's right. Uh, More like the Tajoma Bridge <laughs> disaster. Because we have Joe here. Yes. Joe, thanks so much for coming yeah, Joe, on. Joe, thanks for coming yeah, on. Yeah, thanks for having me again. It's always great. And I have to say, there was significantly less goats this time. Um, though yeah. the Soviet National Anthem still did make an appearance. So we yes. got that going for us. <laughs> um, all right. Commercials. Commercial time. Uh, listen to Lions Led by Donkeys. Buy the Hooligans of Kandahar and read that. Make sure Great it's book. the one by Joe Kasabian <laughs> and not by... <laughs> The other guy who just stole your entire fucking book? Code yeah, it's Jasabian. scanned it sideways. Yeah, uh, there we found like two more, and uh, the, the legal fuck? department of my of my publisher is like, "Why the fuck didn't you tell us about these sooner?" I'm like, "I found all of them yesterday because I was I, I was vanity searching myself on Amazon." <laughs> yeah, my, I I found this book, The Troublemakers of Mazar Sharif. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if I finally outsold Ronan Farrow's book, and I didn't. And I found out that like eight people have been stealing my book. <laughs> I mean, this is the clearly what you've got to do is you've got to steal Ronan Farrow's book. It's a winning strategy. Uh, it's coming the, for you, Ronan. The moral of the story is you should vanity search yourself more. Yeah, all the yeah. time. I'm going to drive an armored train to Ronan Farrow's house to steal his <laughs> manuscript. <laughs> I'm sending out the uh, navvies right now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I want to see fan art of an ATF armored train. <laughs> oh god, so crazy! Like, it's just a giant like uh, World War One train with the tanks <laughs> with the tanks, but with like a Blue Lives Matter sticker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got like a bunch of guys in the windbreakers wearing like the the, the classic '90s federal agent fit of <laughs> dad hat, aviators, mustache. Yeah, hanging off of it. <laughs> oh, I hate it so much. <laughs> a Punisher skull with the train busting through it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, bye, everybody. I think we did a podcast. We did. Yeah. Pods were casted. All right. Pod successfully casted. Pod, pod has been casted. Uh, All right. Okay. All right. I'm going to eat everybody. something while yeah. I still can. Pleasure as always, guys. Yes. All right. Bye. Uh, bye. All right.